Gamer is about a video game that employs uh, nanotechnology. Uh, nanotechnology allows high uh, profile or well healed gamers to control real human beings in a gaming environment. Uh, the game was created by a character, Ken Castle, who I play, who started with a game called uh, Society that allowed people to live in a simulated world controlling real people. But this new game, Slayers, uh, takes it a step further because it's a killing game. It uses members of the surplus death row population as uh, contestants in uh, a game that allows them to win their freedom if they survive 30, session, but 30 sessions. But Ken Castle has um, assured himself that that will never happen until this character, Cable, comes along who, uh, if he does survive the 30 sessions, will expose uh, some pretty uh, potentially damaging secrets about Castle's whole enterprise. So, Yeah, he's a, he's a technological mastermind, a bit of a megalomaniac. He is responsible for these games and the exploitation of this gaming technology. Um, He's reclusive, but when he does make appearances, he tries to make a big splash and captivate people's interests. Um, I think for him, the simulated worlds that he's created are as real as any real world that we might recognize. He lives in a big giant house on the hill all by himself in his house of mirrors surrounded by his minions who make his ideas come to life. Um, as far as the fight choreography, um, I, I, um, w when we had our fight, we sort of came up with it ourselves, but uh, the, the fight that, that happens after that dance sequence was just mind-blowing. I mean, and, and I had nothing to do with the choreography. But, um, yeah, we just, it, was, it was in the script from the beginning um, that, that, that when um, Cable shows up at Castle's house, he has a little surprise for him or a little welcome in the form of a... Uh, soft shoe lip sync to Sammy Davis Jr. singing I've Got You Under My Skin. And um, I just took it from there. They're, they're great. I mean, I, I do think they, they, they share a creative brain. Um, their ability to collaborate successfully is phenomenal. Um, they wrote the script together. They direct together, which is something that usually doesn't work. Um, but they also operate the cameras. Um, so if they have an idea for a shot, they don't have to communicate it to someone. They just make it happen. And, uh, and they're so good with the camera and innovative with the way they move the camera around. Um, it, it's fun as an actor to sort of to play in their world. The idea of the script as, as a whole uh, appealed to me, and the character uh, required a, a sort of broader, more expansive energy than what I'm called upon to do on Dexter, which is a much more internalized, uh, quieter thing. And uh, uh, it, it was nice, the idea of playing a character whose thoughts weren't broadcast to the audience. I could just have my private thoughts. There was no voiceover. Uh, but I, I just, uh, stepping into a, uh, the world that I, that I saw this film to be, or what it aspired to be, was something I'd, I'd never stepped into before. And I must say, seeing the movie, it really, it, it looks like the very thing that leapt off the page when I read it. Um, well, you know, I met with them uh, once and uh, decided to do the movie, met with them a second time when they were in pre-production, and then I showed up. I think the first thing we shot was the big uh, interview with uh, Kira Sedgwick and myself. And, uh, you know, the, we were working at a pretty fast pace, and, uh, you know, I just uh, took their thumbs up to heart and, and, and went for it, you know. Um, but, but uh, it's, it's, I felt as an actor left alone, but I also felt comfortable being left alone because I was very confident that they were moving the camera in a way that was going to be very assured and interesting. The scenes in which I appeared were scenes that existed in, I guess, what would be described as the real world. Um, you don't see Castle appear in the world of Slayers or in the world of society. 
That being said, Castle's real world is not the real world e either. He's surrounded himself with virtual landscapes in his house um, and uh, lives in kind of a, ha a hall of mirrors in a way. Um, so in spite of the fact that I was living in the real world, it was heightened, um, certainly in a, in, a, in, a, in a way that was a departure from the world I have uh, been inhabiting on Dexter. Um, it was it was fun. I mean, I think he is someone who has um, again become so invested in these simulated worlds that they are as real to him as 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 anything. And I think he's trying to create that perception in society generally. Um, it was it was really a lot of fun to uh, play a character who has the capability that he has, the capability to literally control other people um, because of what he's implanted in his own brain. And um, that's a really fun secret to keep. <laughs> Flying, time travel, uh, cloak of invisibility, and um, an expert in all martial arts. <laughs> What can the audience expect from Gamer? Uh, a thrill ride. I mean, you, you really, the, Mark and Brian have created a, a visual language uh, when it comes to the game itself where you really viscerally have the experience of being there and, and, and being in the game with Jerry's character. Um, the action is phenomenal um, and it's organic, you know? I mean, the special effects are great, but what you're seeing, for, for the most part, is real. I mean, what you're seeing on the camera is what they shot, and uh, that's really exciting.